Well, good morning, folks, and welcome. It's uh, the most epic of days. The forecast is absolutely incredible. And I've teamed up with my good mate, grower, fisher, chef, Andrew Mirosh. He's very kindly decided to take us out, have a look at what he does today uh, for a living. Can you believe this? This is his office. Insane. It's one of those mornings that gets you out of bed at 4 a.m. with a spring in your step and has you buzzing. Light winds forecast to luff out to nothing around lunchtime when the land and sea temperatures reach parity and the oceans expected to glass out. A day made for venturing wide to fish down deep where the big fish live. What's over? Well, there's no jobs in Australia, you don't want to travel. So. But in order to do that, we need to get some little fish first. Slimies and yakkers are the best baits going around, and on a morning like this, you would of course expect to run into a few fellow customers at Huey's Live Bait Emporium, just on the other side of the bar. Well, we couldn't have picked a better day. It's going to glass out all day and it's fantastic. So we're on the bait ground. We're about to have a, a jig for some bait, see if we can get some slimies or some um, scad, and we'll, we'll do a bit of live baiting. It's a funny time of year, it's a changeover time of year, so there's the mackerel aren't really here and the snapper haven't turned up, but we'll, we'll scrape together a feed, hopefully. He's making bloody excuses oh, already. Yeah. We haven't even put a rod in, like a line in the water, we haven't put a rod over the side. He's already, yeah. he's already sort of, you know. I don't want you to be disappointed. <laughs> I'm just, just preparing you for. Mate, how could I be disappointed just, just getting to <laughs> spend some time in your shadow? That's it, that's it. Look at this, my <laughs> shadow. <laughs> Go. Straight in the money, D. Oh, I've got three. That's a record for today so far. Three. I've got full strength. Hey! Nearly one just fell off. That's a good string. That's what we try to get. That's four! Four? I've got four. Oh, I've got oh, all falling off. I had, I had four. There were definitely four there before. There's only three there. There's only three. I had four before. This would be the best charter you'd have been on. Thanks, Andrew. I do have my decky here with me today. It's very cheap. As long as you don't play backgammon with him in the evening. Oh, yeah. Do we have to be up the back then? <laughs> Just as there's a bag limit on big fish, Queensland Fisheries enforces catch limits on live bait as well. And it's best that you brush up on all the rules, including the ones that apply to green zones, because ignorance is no defence. When the weather's this good, you just have to make the most of it. And that's exactly what we're doing today, going wide to a couple of spots that Andrew thinks might be holding some big snapper. And Andrew would know where to get them. Commercial fisherman and chef for much of his working life, his style of commercial fishing is very different to the type that's often portrayed in the wider media. It's a solitary lifestyle, and it's not uncommon for Andrew to venture out by himself, so it's just lucky that he absolutely loves his fishing. It's always good to mix it up when it comes to rigging baits, so we've decided to rig a livey, so I'm going to make a live bait rig up to float some of those things. This is what I use, these hooks. Bit of leader. Pretty simple process. It's got to be simple if I can do it. So just, I don't know what this is called, a snood or something, but yeah. So that's the, the top hook that will uh, go into the fish's mouth, the bait's mouth, if I can get it through the hole. Do you want to borrow my glasses? Yeah, I think so. Old man's glasses. So pull it up and that locks that hook in. There's another hook on the bottom. This is now the bottom hook, so just use a standard, I think it's called a locked blood knot on the bottom. Straight through. My dentist loves, loves it when he sees me doing this with my teeth. I think they're two O's or three O's. They're pretty small, so it doesn't seem to matter. The fish just engulf it. If, if you get a fish on a live, it usually just goes and there's nothing left. So a little swivel on top. Blood knot. 50 centimetres the, the leader. I use quite a heavy, That's I think it's 60 pound that leader, but if you get an amberjack or something big on, you really, really need that leader to 
have a lot of go to it because they try to rub you off on the bottom and all sorts of things. But well, we've got a bit of run, so I'm going to use, I think that's a number 10 Borley, but I'll change during the day depending on how much current we've got. But I'll start with that. So that just goes above your live bait rig. That's a running ball sinker? Running ball sinker, sure is. I'm going to give Dean an old smelly old pilchard and I'll use a live bait and we'll see he catches a fish. These are live scad we just caught before. So, little yellow tail scad. They're a member of the Trevally family. They're very good bait. He'll swim, he'll last half an hour on that rig until something eats him, hopefully. And the strip bait. So, running ball sinker on the top. Yeah. A little bit of that um, Lumo tube. I don't even know if it works, but I've done it for years. And a protection knot a little bit. Then I've got a set of, um, I use true turns for bottom fish. I just find they really hook the fish up really, really well because they've they got a camber on them. When the fish grabs it, the hook can turn anywhere in its mouth. But they certainly hook up. So I make them up myself. Okay. The same knot, just a locked blood knot and slab of something and we're away. Now, you're not using leader there? No. Okay, that's going straight I'm on here. I'm setting up to fail, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> so that should move through the water. You don't, you don't necessarily want your bait to be anchored to the bottom. You want your bait to be off the bottom and moving. Moving and around. Because you just never know what they're going to bite on. Okay. So, the good news is we've come to a... Secret spot. Uh, yeah, a spot that you may have seen before on our camper fishing show that Andrew brought us to before. And while well, this morning's been fairly quiet, it seems to me that the fish may have just woken up. We've got something putting a bit of hurt on me here. And I did ask Andrew before if we had a gimbal. I don't think I'm going to need it. No, no gimbal for you. <laughs> just a bit of pain. But we're fishing in some pretty deep water, so this might take a while. So if you need a comfort stop or you want to go get another beer out of the fridge, go and do that. <laughs> Come back and we'll show you what's on the end of the line. They give up once you get them 30 or 40 metres off the bottom, they do. Yeah. They weaken pretty fast and it's still yeah. I think it's a big one, isn't it? It's a snapper. Little score, I think. Oh, what are you saying, tiny? Mate, you must catch a lot of big snapper. You're... Don't lift it out. Don't no, lift it. It's I just hooked. I won't. It's just... Don't lift it out. I Leave its head in the water. I won't. It's just lit. So, this is what we've come for. A very nice specimen indeed. Yeah, baby. I've got to say, Dean, if you reckon that's tiny, you must have caught a lot of big snapper in your life, mate. Well, I must admit, the water's that clear today that I saw him from about 30 metres down. And you're right, Andrew, that is a beautiful fish. That's exactly the sort of fish that we came looking for today. Yeah, he's not a giant, but he's still, it goes three kilo, I reckon. That's not a bad fish. Tell us a bit about uh, about these fish, mate, because they're a, they're a beautiful specimen, aren't they? Lovely looking animal. Yeah, they are. They are. Um, this is this is not snapper season. This is a pretty bad time of the year for snapper, but we're just doing a bit of speculating. But if you can catch a few, you can always catch a few any time of the year. But usually in winter, July, August, September, even June, you can catch decent numbers, and the quality is better, and in shallower water. So. And I must say, they're a spectacular looking fish. They, uh, you know, they're instantly uh, appealing to the, to, to the eye as food, aren't they? They're a beautiful orange colour, they've got these bright blue spots on them. They always look fresh and healthy, don't they? With nice bits of blue and spots. And yeah, no, they're a beautiful oh, he's animal. He's a good fish, he's a good fish. Fantastic. Oh, well, you got dinner anyway. That's good. Let's get a few Well more. on the board. And it's not long until I get my second hookup. Oh, he's on. Oh, what's going on? Dino's on again. At which point, my highly competitive mate, what is going on? Well, what is going on, Andrew? You're doing the talking and I'm doing the walking. Starts to get a little shirty. Hey, this is a good fish, Andrew. Yeah, well, let's see you nail it first. <laughs> and I think it is another snapper, but it's done exactly what the last one did, which is it's kind of given up a bit after it's left the bottom. So, Like me, then, I've totally given up. I'm demoralised. The score is soon to be 2 nil, and I'm supposed to be good at this stuff, you know? Yeah, like, was, what's they, going on? I've always been a lucky fisherman. Um, I was just saying about the, the, the fish giving up a bit after it gets off the bottom. Andrew made a really good point. They're coming out of deep water and so when you're ripping these fish up, you know, through the through the meters, uh, they get the bends. They, uh, it's called barotrauma. Right. Barotrauma, I think it's called. So it kind That's... of paralyzes them, they give up the fight, which makes it a lot easier to get them. Once they're off the bottom, you get that initial hit. You saw the rod bend, but now it's uh, coming up relatively easily. We should see some color in a minute. 
And the other rule is we don't touch the landing net till we sight the fish. Oh, it's a nice fish. That's a beauty. That is a nice fish. This is the best charter you've been on all year. Can you do that for me? Yeah. Thanks, Mata. My hands. Uh, they're very soft. Yeah, I know that. The best part about fishing, someone else fishing your boat, is a boat owns the fish. So <laughs> anyone catch a fish, you put them on the spot. <laughs> That's another nice fish, Andrew. It is beauty. So there you go, another uh, beautiful Morton Island snapper. Uh, this one, um, very similar in size, I suppose. No, he's bigger than the last one, but he's got a knob head like you. Slightly bigger, he's got a knob head. You see, you can hear the insults coming out. He's starting to get the, you know, heebie-jeebies. That's two really nice fish on board. And there's the promise of more to come. On the same mark as Andrew gets sharks, <laughs> and I drop one a lot bigger than the two that we've landed so far. Another drift over the mark, and this time it's the skipper's turn, and he's hooked up on a beauty. This might be bigger than yours, too. I hope it is. Oh, I'm sick of you bitching. I sincerely hope it is. A, this is a good fish. Might have died from old age. I'm definitely not fishing fit at the moment. Do you want to wind this in so you pretend you got it? No, you do it. I was only joking. <laughs> like the last two. Like the last two. It's not doing much, but that's why I think it's a pearly. But it'll probably be a snapper. But it could be a pearly or a snapper. Quite often you'll go fishing early and you'll go pretty good and then it'll get quiet in the afternoons. It's been the opposite today. We've had a, a fairly quiet morning and all of a sudden the breeze has luffed right out. There's no wind now. Like, I mean, have a look at this. We're quite a way offshore from that's more than in the background. Quite a way offshore. We covered a lot of ground though. We tried and tried and that's the secret of fishing is you, you got to keep trying and trying different baits, different depths, different weight with different leads, different rigs and it makes a difference. Eventually you'll catch something. Something always happens at some, some stage of the day in my mind. Get the net ready for you, my friend. Don't touch the net till you see the fish. Don't touch the net till you see, <laughs> see the fish. <laughs> oh, that's, look at that. That's a nice fish. Have a look at that. That's a nice fish. That is a beauty. Mirosh uh, fights back. Uh, he's up. Uh, that is a good fish, eh? Huh? That one would eat yours for breakfast, yeah, I reckon. I reckon. I don't would. want to say anything, but it probably would. Oh, he's a beauty. He's a oh, ripper. Snapper, one of my favourite fish to catch. It's not the right time of year to catch them, but we're actually doing quite well. We've gone against all the rules, and usually the morning's the best fishing time, but or late afternoon, but we seem to be doing really well when it's only lunchtime, so plenty of hours to go yet. But yeah, that's a good fish. Wow, these snapper are quality fish, and we'll be headed to Andrew's local seafood distributor after being treated with the care and attention of someone who really understands how to look after fish once it's caught. This is a Japanese way of bleeding the fish, so rather than cutting the fish's throat like we used to, which I believe opens up all of the bad bacteria in the flesh, I just nick the gills, cut the gills through, and they bleed out in no time, and you get beautiful white, snowy white fish. Another good, really good trick is a tuna spike, a kajimi spike. So what we do with that is we place it behind the fish's eye and that paralyzes the fish. So that totally stops the fish flapping around, bruising itself. And you'll see the difference in your fish. The other secret is ice, ice, ice. There's much ice. I've probably got 70 kilos of ice there. It's a lot of ice for a few fish, but it makes a difference. And that comes from plenty of experience, not only catching snapper as a commercial fisher, but also cooking it as a commercial chef. Andrew's new digital moniker of grower, fisher, chef speaks volumes about a life spent growing, catching and cooking around the bay and on North Stratty. Something that he's keen to share with anyone that's interested. My grandmother had a house at Point Lookout and I, the neighbour next door was a professional fisherman and I was always obsessed with fishing off the beach and the rocks and anyway he promised he'd take me out when I turned 13 in his boat and on my 13th birthday it was the crappiest day of the year but he took me out. We caught one tune and we came home and it was just the conditions were horrific but from that day on I was absolutely hooked with fishing out of a boat and I became a chef. When I was 18, I finished school and instead of going to university, I, I applied for 55 jobs as an apprentice and eventually the day I was supposed to start back at school, I, um, I actually got a job as an apprentice chef, much to my father's absolute horror. When did you get your first commercial fishing license? 
over 20 years ago when I was first there. But I, the reason I got it was I could so I could sell my own fish legally to my businesses, my restaurants and stuff. I used to um, have a 14 foot boat and a tractor and we'd launch off the beach, either Cylinder or Flinders, and um, four o'clock in the afternoon I'd come in, I'd put the boat in the trailer, I'd drive up to the restaurant and I had a couple of chefs working for me and Karen was working on a manager. And I'd unload the fish out of the box and by six o'clock I had a line of people waiting to come and eat the fish that I caught that day. So. What's the mission statement for, for Grower Fish and Chip? What is it all about? What, what's it supposed to be? It's mainly about showcasing things that I like to do. Like I like to grow things. I've always grown things and planted things and cooked with what I've grown. And I love the fishing side of it. And I like smoking. And I, I just just everything I like to do is what I want to show people. And if people are interested, I'm more than happy to show them. Like I've got into smoking a lot lately. Like I bought an offset smoker, so I've been doing a hell of a lot of smoking with charcoal and timbers and stuff and the, the results are just awesome, absolutely awesome. And it's easy and it's stuff people can do. I don't do food that people can't cook. There's no point in doing that. I want to do stuff that people want to go to their cupboard or go to their fish shop and, and buy it and then take it home and have a go at it, but not difficult. Andrew will be doing plenty more fishing and cooking on camper in the next few weeks and months. And also over on our online food channel, Eat. If you're keen on following his fishing and culinary adventures, you can also find him on Instagram at Grower Fisher Chef. Can't wait till we do it all again real soon.